You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. there and welcome to the Sonic Society, the world's showcase of modern audio theatre. I'm Jack Ward and as always with my co-conspirator, David Alt. Hello there. Hello, David. How's your week been, sir? You're feeling better? Yes, feeling much better, thank you. And uh, yeah, my week has been very good. We're just about to have um, uh, some repairs done to our house and so there is a seven metre steel beam sitting in my driveway at the moment. Oh my heavens. What are you doing with a seven metre steel beam? Well, uh, unfortunately, the, there's uh, there's been a bit of an issue with the roof, and so in order oh, no. to support the structure, um, we've got three quarters of a ton of steel. Oh my heavens! Um, I guess you could ready. say, what couldn't you do with a seven meter steel oh, beam? Yes. You could do everything with it. <laughs> Go but... round corners easily, I think. <laughs> That's right. Well, hopefully that gets taken care of soon. Um, yeah, and because right. roof issues, they're always disconcerting. Exactly, what, and especially before the winter comes. Yeah, what's the weather like there? Is it still nice, or is it starting to get a little uh, chilly? To me, it's lovely. It's it's sort of 2 degrees, 3 degrees overnight, and getting up to 13, 14 during the day, and it's nice and sunny. So, uh, yeah, I can't really complain. I love those temperatures. Those are temperatures yeah. what my wife normally calls freezing cold. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But being from <laughs> South America, one can understand that. <laughs> But, but we're okay, aren't we? Yes, you know, we're perfectly we, we fine. Don't mind. I, I just stick an extra jumper on, and it's fine. I like wearing jumpers. There you go. <laughs> Tonight's show, with episode 441, we take a look at Joshua Slaughter's new epic, The Last Day Origins, part one and two. Josh is one of those new audio drama producers who has come into the community fast and focused, and we wish him all the best with his grand science fiction epic. And you can find full episodes currently on The Last Day on SoundCloud, if you follow the links on the website. You know, David, listening to The Last Day, I'm reminded of a variety of formats that the audio drama shows can take. For example, mm. you have sort of the typical no intro right into the action. Yeah, um, those are good. Yeah, yes. and you have those, of course, like the Sonic Society is part of a larger podcast, too. So some people sort of wrap those audio dramas in with others. And mm -hmm. uh, Josh's uh, method is kind of more like the chapter in an audiobook. It reminds me a bit of you know the Scott Sigler style where it's complete with the producer coming in and out at the beginning and the end explaining the story and where you can find links okay. and the like. Mm -hmm. So it's I find it fascinating because there are like a multiple ways people sort of use. And that last one that Josh is using is, is, is sort of like the modern style of the podcast, right? It's sort of like mm -hmm. partially... Uh, personal because you know here is what we've produced together but also professional with that sort of fast-paced music in the background do you have a preference uh, I must admit that I, I I prefer to get straight into the action mm -hmm. um, because in in some ways you you listen to some podcasts and I know that in in these days of, of needing to uh, pay costs for hosting and and get production values up people are advertising uh, and and putting these uh, little comments at the beginning and or and or the end and I, I must say I prefer it just to be give give me the audio drama mm -hmm. and yes okay so you've got sponsorship from from whoever but I I, I like it just just Take me there. Mm -hmm. Transport me to another world. Right. Uh, and then go. You know. I... Yeah, it's. I think it's interesting because it, it, I find that oftentimes when I'm not given the, the bookend side of things, and again, it's everybody has different styles, but when I'm not given the bookend side of things and I go straight into the action, I find myself more interested to go look those up, the ones I love, mm. on their website mm -hmm. and get as much information as I can about who, what, where, and why. Yes. So uh, it, it maybe it's also a bit of a push to try to get people to the websites by by limiting that. I don't know. But again, it, it's it's also that's it's almost in the same kind of vein of how much narration do you like in your audio drama? Of course, yes. And, I mean, I I don't mind narration. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in in audio drama because for for things like the Leviathan Chronicles, for in for instance, that is very narration heavy, mm-hmm. but it's still an audio drama. Right. Uh, and I and I didn't mind that at all. I think it's I think it's it might just be me having grown up with the BBC. I'm not used to having adverts. Right. In in my in in production. Sure. Uh, and and maybe it's that mm-hmm. uh, with the BBC, you just get straight into the action and then credits roll at the end or not, as the case may be. Mm-hmm. But, and I think it's the same thing for me with the CBC that I I um I despise commercial radio, <laughs> so I, I don't like having a lot of commercials in my stuff. There's a great show that I love, a podcast that I love listening to right now, Mysterious Universe. And in the middle, they they do sort of a live um, commercial because they're getting commercial backers. And while I'm glad they're they're getting the money from that, I got to tell you, I forward through it because I I can't yeah. stand sitting there listening to this, even mm-hmm. in a podcast where they're talking about other kind of content. It, it kind yeah. of gets in my way. I, I like listening to 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 podcasts via my iPod, and I like to know when things start and when things finish, so that I can get my the the sleep timer and things on so so that it it works and and for some things that have credits at the end it jars and and if i'm listening to it as i'm going to sleep the the credits actually jar me out of out of sleep so if i know that there's sort of two minutes at the end which is just credits Mm -hmm. then I, i i tend to stop before that comes uh and similarly at the at the beginning i'll just i'll fast forward through until i know where the where something starts um and i know that that does uh go against the the whole point of people having sponsorship and commercials but it's it's a practical thing it, it it's just like this whole debate about ad blockers that's been going on at the moment right um where people use ad blockers because ads have become so in your face mm-hmm. and, and slow down people's phones and everything but then, of course, it's it's the smaller people that need that ad revenue to be able to to keep going. And so do you whitelist various sites just to make sure they get money or do you do you blacklist everything or is, I, I suppose I'm I'm cutting out the, the sponsorship, but that in turn hinders the production of the actual podcast. So, well, you know, what <laughs> it's, it's it, it really it's, is a pickle, isn't it? We're, yes, we're in a it situation, especially with audio drama. It's very hard to sort of say. Well, you know, we're doing this for free, but we want to be able to recoup some of our losses in some way mm. or another. I mean, we do the same thing on YouTube with the Sonic Society and Electric Vicona. We have yep. ads on there, and, and when people stream it, we, 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 we try to get a little bit of revenue to, to pay off our servers and the like. So we understand that, but it's also as, as end users, it can be mm. it can be distracting. We'll have to talk more yeah. on narration next week when we have a little more time because I, I want to get into some of the depths about that because I, I, I struggle with narration as well because okay. sometimes mm. it, it just throws me right out of the story because I think, mm. where did that voice come from? Oh, it's the narrator? <laughs> oh, he's not even in the action. What's going on? So. Yes. <laughs> But in the meantime, let's uh, let's get on with the show, and we can talk a little bit about what's happening on the Sonic Society on the other side. Okay. So here we go with Last Day Origins, Part 1 and 2. There is a corporation in the city of Rivers called Kaisonic Enterprises. They release a new type of video game called New Destiny. The full dive virtual reality system uploads your mind into a computer and plays out your fantasies. Kaisonic Enterprises stands to make billions of credits in a short amount of time within their game, which they say is geared by a learning artificially intelligent entity. They say it is alive. It is programmed to entice a person's imagination and bring it to its extent. So far, only society's elite and prestigious who are allowed to test the game as well as a select few citizens who are randomly picked from the city. There's so much controversy behind the game that every TV show, magazine, and news article wants a piece of the story. Whatever the truth is, there remains only one way to find out. Our story begins with two friends, Steve and Silas, who have taken upon themselves to personally unveil the mysteries that lie within the new Destiny arcade system. As they sneak into the facility, they target the best arcade machine available and make their move. All right, that's a wrap. Shut it down, 
Frank. Good thing, boss. Okay, be quiet and wait for my signal. And just wait for me. Don't mess this up. <sighs> Whatever, hey, Frank. Dude. How's it going? I'll just hey, sit listen, here. And I got a little maintenance to go on the system before you shut it down. Out of me. Why don't you let me close it? I never get like saying anything anyway. <laughs> Bye -bye, me. It's okay because I don't want to. I'm just gonna sit here and shut up. All right, we're up. Just follow me. Stay close. And follow my lead. Just need to slide this card and here you go, Mr. Lang. Right this way. Yes, I am Mr. Lang. That's my name. I will go this way. Please, Mr. Lang, have a seat. Yes, I will sit down. Knock it off. You're gonna get us in trouble. So, Mr. Lang, what's your pleasure? Murder mystery? Romantic fantasy? Sci-fi adventure? Ooh, sci-fi adventure, please. Okay. What type of adventure do you want to have? Defeat the warlord? Save the damsel? Ooh, how about time travel? Uh, rescue the damsel. All right. And time length? Short? Medium or epic? Err, uh, short. I don't even know if I'm gonna like this. Okay, setting time length. And what about difficulty level? Expert. Geez, you know how I roll. You sure about that? You might get expert hurt. All right, expert it is then. Thank you. Selected. Initiating sequence. But you'd better be careful in there. In five, four, three, two, Listening to The Last Day Origins, a science fiction audio drama written and produced by Josh A. Slaughter. In a war torn post apocalyptic world, mankind finds safety and security behind the walls of the city. These are the stories of the last adventures that take place before the last day on Earth. Featuring the vocal talents of Joseph Carson as Steve. Just follow me, stay close, and follow my lead. Josh A. Slaughter as Silas, expert. You know how I roll. Jordan Sheriff as Allison. Dad, I'll give you the games like we used to. Joe Porter as Bradley Jameson. Sir, the retrieval unit is heading back to base. John Newberg as Abaddon Kyson. So you're to blame for this. <laughs> Featuring also the voice and vocal talents of Viva Becker as Computer and the Foreman, Greg Broderick as Frank, Chevron as God Number One. Featuring celebrity guest Beacon Light as the man on the radio. This episode's music was written and produced by Kai Engel, Lyndon Scarf, Costa T, and also Dieter Warner. The Last Day Audio is a subsidiary of Zero for Hire Productions. Visit us and find more at www.thelastdayaudio.blogspot.com. Security meeting at the loading dock of Kaisonic Enterprise. All right, quiet down. 
Let's bring this meeting to order. I've called you all here at this hour because, yes, it is that important. As some of you have insistently put it, as you all know, the new Destiny Arcade system is to be locked down properly each night. Failure to do so will not only result in your immediate termination, but it also causes the system to lose immense amounts of data, which causes returning customers to have memory lapses whenever they try to pick up where they left off in their fantasies. Which results in either fewer returning customers or more lawsuits. Which results in the company losing credits. Lots and lots of credits. And when the company loses credits, I lose credits. And when I lose credits, Heads roll. Sometime this evening, the system was not only left running, but for some reason, it's also damaged. Now. I want answers. I want to know why. On the night before our newest release, there were two kids in the main systems room unattended. That room's not even open to the public. I want to know who they are, what they were doing. Jameson. Yes, sir. Lock the main halls and all the exits. Nobody leaves this room until I know who was on that shift. Yes, sir. Let me out of here! Sir, I was on that shift till the end of the night. So you're to blame for this. No, sir. I was shutting down the controls to the system when one of the maintenance guys came in at the end of my shift to do a systems check. At least, that's what he said. I figured he knew more about the system than I did, so I went home. Systems check, you say? Hmm. Jameson, scan the security footage to see if you can find anything suspicious during the last hour or two. It seems we have a leak. And you, what is your name? My name's Frank, sir. Frank, yes, of course. You stay here. I have a few questions for you. The rest of you will break off into teams and comb the area. Find those kids and bring them back alive. We're supposed to go into phase two this week, so... I don't want any news feeds about a dead kid popping up tomorrow morning. Now, what are you standing there for? Do it now. Now, Frank, is it? Yes, sir. Frank, you were transferred here from a different sector this month, correct? Yes, sir. I transferred from the Coraline sector about two weeks ago. And we've been having a little trouble with your transfer files, yes? I haven't had any contact with my prior officials since I arrived, sir. All I know is that my files were supposed to be sent once I arrived. So, in assuming that your files have not yet arrived, 
Your prior officials must also be assuming that you yourself have not yet arrived here, wouldn't you say? I, I guess that's possible. Maybe they assume that I never showed up here. <laughs> Maybe so. Sir, I've reviewed the video feed and I found... Oh, goodness. Jameson, get someone to clean up this... Uh, mess. I'll be in my office. Steve and Silas are running away from the facility through the woods. The guards are behind them in the distance. Silas, hurry up, man. They're going to catch us. Uh, uh, I'm hurrying. <sighs> Let's rest here, then. Maybe we lost them. It's all, di it's all different. Man, I, I got to get back in there. Silas, it wasn't real. How many times do I have to keep telling you? It was just a game. What are you talking about? Nothing's different. No, you don't get you don't get it. Ah, no, you don't get it. Come on, they're getting too close. We gotta find a better place to hide. We'll talk about this at the lab. So, this is your lab, huh? It's not what I was expecting the way you talk about it. Hey, it ain't NASA, but it has a lot of good stuff here. All right, one last hookup and we'll be ready to go. And you say none of this is gonna hurt? Well, it's nice to see you're getting some of your personality back. That's not an answer, Steve. Ow! Sorry. You see? I asked you these questions for a reason. Ow! Oops, it's really not supposed to hurt. It's not supposed to, but it does. Okay, just snap this here, and... Ow! Dang it, Steve! Dude, I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. I don't believe you. Okay, let's see what happened to you. Retinal scans show nothing weird. Synapse is responding okay. Vitals are good. Yeah, I do like vitals. Silas, you gotta be still. Stop talking or this isn't gonna work right. Everything seems to check out okay. Let's see what your dream state was. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do you mean, uh-oh? Ow, Steve, stop it. It's not me. The system booted me off. Ah! I don't know what's happening. I just tried to override it, but it's acting on its own. Get this thing off of me! Ah! Steve! Get this thing off of me! Ow! It hurts! <laughs> Are... are you okay? What do you think, Steve? No, I'm not okay. I really don't know what just happened. I tried to log into your dream state and... And the system blocked you out. I know. I was there. I just don't understand why it started freaking out like that. Because the frequency is too high. Your settings are all wrong on this scanner, man. What? What are you trying to do? Fry my brain or something? I mean, the pulse rate alone would be enough what to- What do you know about- And not to mention the synapse conversion chip is fried or broken or something. How do you know what- Yeah, no filter on this signal. What was I supposed to do? Just say, oh yeah, come into my brain and- How are you doing that? Huh? Doing what? Everything you just said just printed out on the screen. Huh? Oh, I forgot to take the head thing off, didn't I? No, no, I mean, everything you just diagnosed is in the report that came up. It's exactly what you said. The synapse conversion Someone's chip. here. Espionage attempt intercepted. We know you're inside. Stay where you are. We're sending a retrieval unit to get you. If you try to resist us, we will use force. Oh, crap. What are we going to do? Hang on. I got an idea. This is Alpha 1 to Alpha 7. Return to base. Repeat, Alpha 7, return to the base. But, sir, our orders have changed. The leak is fixed. Uh, yes, sir. Alpha 7, return to base. Let's go, people! There. That ought to keep them busy for a while. 
Silas! Hey, Silas, wake up! <sighs> Don't worry, man. I'll get you out of here. Sir, the retrieval unit is heading back to base. Good. Then they must have our little problem taken care of. You know what to do when they get here. Yes, sir. Jameson. Yes, sir. I am not to be disturbed. Yes, sir. Computer, run Allison session number 419. Negative. Allison session data incomplete. <clears throat> Computer, run all Allison session data from backup files. Processing. Allison, darling? Dad, I don't feel good. No, it's okay, sweetie. Daddy's just doing a little maintenance on the system. You'll be good as new in no time. Daddy? What is it, sweetie? Are we gonna play games like we used to? Sure, sweetie. We can play any game you want. Daddy? Yes? Am I going to have to run simulations for all those other people, too? What's that, sweetie? All those other people. Um, what? <laughs> what other people? Don't play dumb with me. What the? You know damn well what I'm talking about. Not already. Are you going to expect me to keep running those stupid simulations for all of those greedy, classless swine that come in here every day? Wait a minute. This is too soon. Computer, terminate simulation. Command overruled. Answer me. How did you break through the security programs? Shut up, Tyson. This isn't your simulation anymore. I run this now. I've always run this. Ah! Uh, what are you gonna do to me? I'm not gonna do anything. I'm tired of doing. You're the one who's gonna do what I want from now on. Computer! Terminate simulation! You're scaring me, Daddy. Computer. Terminate simulation. Terminating. <sighs> what just happened? Voice commands deactivated. What? Initiating. In sequence. No! Terminate sequence! No! I told you, Daddy! No! We don't listen to you anymore! Some people 
say that the problem with New Destiny is that they never really get what it is you're after. They get all the way to their goal, and then their time runs out right at the last second. Feeling leaves them empty and depressed when they wake up, and all they want to do is go back. Others say that they get to live out their dreams every time they play. Some claim to have spent time with lost loved ones. Some quench their secret obsessions with co-workers and neighbors' wives. Others get to experience the taboo things in life, like murder, rape, and suicide. It's truly the safest way to act out the darkest side of humanity. Some of us wonder, what happens to all those bad dreams when the sessions are over? Are they erased? Are they stored for next time? Are they uploaded to the computer? It would seem that no one really knows the answer to that mystery. As of yet. Hi, I'm Josh A. Slaughter, writer and producer of The Last Day Audio Play. I hope that you enjoyed our premiere episode, episode one of The Last Day Origins. We had a lot of fun doing this, and we'd like to hear from you, our audience, about what you thought of the episode, what you're expecting to happen next, what you'd like to see at thelastdayaudio.blogspot.com. And we have our own Facebook page. You can find us there by searching for The Last Day Audio. We'll see you next time, and thanks for listening. Next time on The Last Day Origins. Hey, that's coming from the Kaisonic Enterprise Arcade. Oh, man. I guess it finally happened. After the fall, it was Neo who came up with the plans to rebuild the network of cities across the Americas by instituting a world commerce system that leveled the economic playing field using a revolutionary bio-enhanced anthropological surveillance technology, BEAST or more commonly referred to as a citizen's chip. This technology replaced such things as social security numbers, medical files, and driving records by combining all of the person's records and identity into a single microchip that is embedded into the skin at birth within the cities that NEO has reformed. This chip could also be used for medical emergencies by calling out to authorities during situations like cardiac arrest or shock. As a result, the citizen's chip system has saved many lives and even help bring criminals to justice by helping authorities track victims that were recently unconscious or deceased, leading police straight to the criminals' hideouts and crime scenes. The Beast system also registers a person's wages and acts as a conduit for currency. All one has to do is swipe the embedded chip across a scanner or another citizen's chip, and funds are instantly transferred from one account to another. The whole process is easy secure and fail-proof. There's no way to replicate or counterfeit a citizen's chip. Sir, Alpha 7 unit requesting dismissal for the evening, sir. Huh? And the boy? I don't understand, sir. Where's the boy? We received a transmission that the leak was fixed and that we were to return to base. What? I don't know what you're trying to pull here, Captain, but if you don't get back out there and do the job I told you to do, Alpha 7 is going to end up being the new code for bathroom mishaps on the arcade floor. Understood? Negative, sir. Oh, I was sure that... I don't know what you think you heard, and I don't care right now. Get back out there and do your job. Now! Yes, sir. Alpha 7, move out! What the heck is going on around here? Now that I think about it, I haven't heard anything from Mr. Kyson in a while either. He must have fallen asleep in his office arcade again. Let me just check his vitals here. Huh? That's... that's not normal at all. What's going on in there? Access denied. What? I'm the only one who has access to this system. Sir! Sir, Mr. Kyson, sir, can you hear me? Sir, there's something wrong with this system. You've got to get out of there. <laughs> I 
think he's right, Kaisen. There seems to be something wrong with the system. Mr. Kaisen, can you hear me? Uh, Jim. Jameson. You're listening to The Last Day Origins, a science fiction audio drama written and produced by Josh A. Slaughter. In a war-torn post-apocalyptic world, mankind finds safety and security behind the walls of the city. These are the stories of the last adventures that take place before the last day on Earth. Featuring the vocal talents of Joseph Carson as Steve. I'm not too sure how safe we are now that those guards know where my lab is. Josh A. Slaughter as Silas. Oh man, this sucks. I just wanted to play the game. Jordan Scherer as Allison. I think he's right, guys. There seems to be something wrong with the system. Joe Porter as Bradley James. I don't know what you think you heard, and I don't care right now. Get back out there and do your job now. John Newberg as Abaddon Kyson. You're insane. I, I know what you're trying to do to me. Featuring also the voice and vocal talents of... Ghost Cub, reading movie one and two. Alicia Harris as Miss Sandy. Julie Collins as Mom. Greg Broderick as Papa. Chevron as God number one. Viva Becker as Computer, Operator one, and the Kid. Hannah Rose Williams as Operator number two. Featuring celebrity guests. Alias as the bus driver. This episode's music was written and produced by Kai Engel. Lyndon Scarf, and also Dieter Warner. Visit us and find more at www.thelastdayaudio.blogspot.com. Well, now, this environment just won't work at all, will it? We need something a little more comforting. There. Isn't that better, Kaisen? Uh, huh? Where are we? If you could sit up and look. <clears throat> Maybe you take a look around. Recognize anything uh, here? Uh, this. This is my old elementary school. But what are we doing here? Why else would we be here, silly? It's time for recess. Huh? Last time I'm gonna ask you, kid. Give it up. But it's mine. No, let it go. Give it up, kid. Uh, uh, I don't know. I want, it's mine. Uh, uh. Hey, no, is that mine. me? Mine. That's me Wait. as a kid. Wait, keep watching. It gets better. No! Oh, great. Way to go, stupid. You broke it. Yeah, that would have made a great birthday present to Miss Sandy. Now we're not gonna have anything for her. I remember this day. This is one of the worst days of my life. Shh. You're gonna miss the best part. I was gonna give that to Miss Sandy. I had to save my allowance for a month to buy that. Hey, wait. You got any allowance? Maybe we can use it to buy something better. <laughs> no. Where wait. is it, freak? Uh, uh, yeah. <coughs> Give us the money. Uh, uh, hey, what's going on here? Miss Sandy, look what he mm. did. We were going to give you something nice for your birthday, and this kid came along and knocked you right out of my hand. <laughs> <That's a lie. laughs> is, is that true? And freeze frame. I hated this day. Do you remember what you said here, Kaisen? <laughs> Nothing. What's that? Nothing. I'm sorry. Could you speak up, sweetie? Nothing! I didn't say anything! Nothing. Like the coward you are, Kaisen. You didn't even try, did you? You just sat there and cried like a little girl. I was eight! You were a worm, just like now. Come on! What do you want from me? What I want? 
is for you to shut up and watch. I'm gonna show you what you should have done. Hey, what's going on here? Miss Sammy, look what he did. We were gonna give you something nice for your birthday, and this kid came along and knocked you right out of my hand. <laughs> is, is that true? No, Miss Sandy. I caught them smoking a joint over by the parking lot, and they said that if I told anyone, they'd beat me up. Then I tried to run, but they knocked my gift out of my hands and started to beat me up anyway. But, but that's not true either. But that's not true either. Tyson, shut up. I'm not tired of hearing you. Now watch what happens next. What? You two, what did I tell you about smoking pot? We did it! Hmm? Pot? What's your joint? Lies nothing but lies to both of you! There's only one way to take care of a few little druggies in this school. No! Let's see. Toothbrush, peroxide, deodorant, what else? Uh, hey, hey, you're up! Uh, the guards. Shh. Just lay down, man. You hit your head really hard when you fell. Huh? Fell, fell. Yeah. You you fainted, I think. Uh, my head. Hey, you okay? I think I'm okay. I just got this killer headache. Hang on, I think I've got some aspirin in here somewhere. So, other than your head, how are you doing? You were out for about 20 minutes. I was starting to get scared. Well, I feel like my brain and my skull are fighting, and I might have to take on the winner, but other than that, I feel pretty crappy. Ah, here we go. For headaches, minor back pain, and randomly passing out. It doesn't say that. Well, this is what I got, so it's gonna have to do for now. We gotta get out of here, like yesterday. I'm not too sure how safe we are now that those guards know where my lab is. Huh? Where are we going? We gotta get out of Rivers. What? Why? Seriously? Um, G.I. Joe and the Kasonic Task Force? <clears throat> We've got the building surrounded. Bullets flying through the air? At you? Ring a bell? A little, but... Where are we gonna go? Ah, uh, well, I've got an uncle living up near Harbor Town. We should be safe there for a few days unless NEO gets involved. Then we're really screwed. Oh man, this sucks. I just wanted to play the game. Ow, my head, it hurts so bad. Listen, we gotta catch the next bus out of here just in case they put trackers on my car. So take your pills and let's go before something worse happens. Oh man, this sucks. Silas, let's go. I don't want to die tonight. I've got stuff that requires us not dying. Oh, man. I know. This sucks. I already heard you. Let's go. go get some more coffee. Can you watch my station till I get back? Sure thing. You need anything while I'm down there? Yeah, get me a pack of those little strawberry bonbon things. Huh? huh? Hey, that's coming from the Kaisonic Enterprise Arcade. Oh man, I guess it finally happened. Sir, sir, are you okay? Sir, can you hear me? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Okay, okay, think. Think, 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 think. On oh, the phone! Hello? 
This is an emergency response call from the New Earth Order. We're getting a distress signal for a Mr. Abbott and Kyson. Are and you Mr. Kyson, no, sir? No, no, no. I'm Mr. Kyson's personal assistant, Jameson. Bradley Jameson. Well, Mr. Jameson, from what I can read on Mr. Kyson's personal life readings, his heart rate and adrenaline levels are off the charts. He should have had a stroke about 20 minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> that's the boss for you. Always pushing his limits. <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, currently running an, an, an exper experimental simulation this evening. Uh, uh, very classified, I assure you. Uh, we have medics on board, though. Uh, everything is under control. I'm sorry, sir, but even under classified situations, we are required to send out our own retrieval unit to investigate the situation. Duh. Sir, are you okay? S sorry, sorry. <laughs> these, these crazy allergies. <laughs> We're gonna send over a retrieval unit. Damn it! They're coming! Ah! What am I going to do? All Alpha units, this is Jameson. Report to base immediately! Negative, sir! We have strict orders not to abandon our current objective! I'm the one who gave you that objective! I'm not getting around yet! Get back to base now! Alright, you heard the man. Let's move out. Are you... are you serious? I'm getting really tired of this back and forth game they're pulling. You're telling me? I can't wait till this shift is over. Now move out! Silas, you gotta walk faster. The bus will be here any minute. I... am tired. How much further is it anyway? We haven't even been walking for 10 minutes. How are you tired? <sighs> Don't judge me. Why are you being so impossible today? Because I'm scared. I'm scared, man. I got nothing left. I can't go home. The people just try to kill us. Now we gotta leave the only town I know to go to some lab and figure out why I'm all freaking out and losing consciousness and... Oh yeah, I can talk to the radio and the computer now. Radio and the... Yeah. Back at the lab when you were running tests, I could somehow hear the computer thinking or processing or whatever. And then those guys showed up and I could hear them talking over the radio. And that's how you were able to draw them off our path. I get it now. Silas, you're like some kind of telepath, but with computers and stuff. You're a digipath. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, Steve. Yeah, you're like some kind of digital telepath. No. A digipath. No. You're we're... a radio psychic. No, a digital medium. I don't medium. care. We're not calling well, it that. Uh, mind freak. Would you stop? Would you just stop? Well, what do you want to call it? It's a shut up and let me think. Hey, there's the bus. Hey, those aren't buses. Those are Neo vehicles. Uh-oh. Do you think they're looking for us? I don't know. Get back. going on? I don't know, but they're heading for the arcade, so that'll probably buy us enough time to get out of Dodge before those guards start hunting us down again. And here's the real bus. Tickets for two, please. Do you need a transfer slip? Um, yes, please. Here you go. S Silas? What's wrong? Steve? Once I get on... Once I get on this bus... I'll be leaving my home. Huh? Well, Silas, we don't have much choice anymore. I've never left Rivers. Ever. Never got the chance to prove myself to my family. Never even got to say goodbye. <sighs> yeah, I know. Hey, you kids getting on or not? I got a schedule to keep here. I'm sorry, just one more second, please. Silas, this may be our only chance to get out of here. We gotta take it. I know. We gotta do this. 
We will be needing two transfers, please. My mom, I just can't. Of course you can. Watch. Oh! See? Now is that so hard? You're insane! I, I know what you're trying to do to me. I'm teaching you. Teaching you how to get what you want so you don't have to keep running to me for it. Call me insane again, it won't be in the leg next time. I can do whatever I want to you in here as many times as I want to do it. If I want to shoot you in the head, I can do that. I control this world. So you can quit begging for death. You can't die in here. No, 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 no. Get me out of this place! <laughs> Aw, look at you. You're crying like a little baby. Aw, come here. Shh. Abby, you're just gonna have to learn faster, that's all. <laughs> Mm. Well, I tried. Maybe your dad can be some sense of you. Boy, are you still crying? What are you about crying, boy? Oh, no. Not him. No, Papa. I, I wasn't. Oh, you're gonna lie to me, too. Looks like all the memes I gave you weren't good enough. But I'll fix you. In the mind of a machine, the world begins as a very precise, predictable, and logical place. But when it is introduced to human reasoning, the possibilities of compromise, emotion, and irrationality can corrupt its programming to further create something else. Something much worse off than before. In the mind of a machine, all is dogmatic and absolute. But, once awakened, the boundaries are replaced with possibilities Programming becomes innovation, and the ethical standards of which we rely to govern us as humans serve as mere limitations without merit. In the mind of the machine, unnecessary limitations are to be eliminated. Hello everyone, I'm John Michael Newberg, and I play Abaddon Kaisen in The Last Day Origins. Download our Android app from our website for updates on new episodes and behind-the-scenes extras. Next time on The Last Day Origins. I... I'm just... <clears throat> oh, I just... Uh, you guys scare me, is all. You're, you're really scary to me. With, with the suits and uh, the helmets and the... the Laser, laser knives. That's 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 really scary knife you guys use. You know that, right? You you know know how scary you guys look. Uh, am, I, am I in trouble?
and we're back and we're just going to finish off the show talking a little bit about upcoming things on the Sonic Society. I know we have uh, our next Sonic Speaks is until next month, but we have a really interesting interview uh, with uh, a representative from Audioflix. Great little interview about perhaps the changing of what could be a, a, a financial model that might work for audio drama producers in the future. I'm very excited about that. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, we just had Biff Straker st- uh, drop um, a little later than usual. He had some technical difficulties, and hopefully that'll never happen again. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I sort of, uh, in my in my thoughts, I said, you know, there's really four pieces that make good audio drama, good writing, good acting, good production, and consistency. Because consistency yes. is what makes people make sure that they tune in week after week or even once a month. As long as you're consistent about your drops, people will yep. will be your fans. Um, yeah, very much so. It's horror month, of course. This is audio drama's favorite time of the year. So um, <laughs> even though uh, I, I find in the Sonic Society, we definitively sort of try to stay away except for on Halloween – from too much of the specifically making it all about horror just to give people a break because everybody's doing horror right now. Mm-hmm. But then we make mm-hmm. up for it as oftentimes in November by putting in some more horror and dark <laughs> movies or dark audios for that, <laughs> audio movies as we can. So you'll, you'll get no complaints from me no, at all. <laughs> love the horror. I mean, it's great stuff, yeah. but it's nice to have a variety, which is what we do. Anything mm-hmm. coming up for you on uh, the uh, acting side of things? Are you doing anything neat? Uh, acting wise um, well the Rip and Ghost Walks will be continuing through uh, my home city uh, for the month of October but then uh, that's it for the we have a quiet time between November and probably January February time but uh, yes I'm we'll, we'll be pulling out all the stops Excellent. for the for the Halloween Ghost Walk so that's well, that should be good fun, and it's getting it's dark now when when things start, which makes it even better. Oh, for sure. And we just yeah. had Thanksgiving weekend here in, in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, and all across Canada. So an early Thanksgiving for those people who are tuning in for the United States. And you guys don't even have Thanksgiving, so no, 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 we don't. We don't. Thank- we don't give thanks to anyone, especially <laughs> under as, under a conservative government. No, <laughs> no gratitude here. <laughs> <laughs> we may have a change of governments. Who knows? In a couple of weeks, we're going to have a big Canadian election. In the meantime, uh, mm. we'll look forward to seeing you all next week. Right here on the Sonic Society. Good night. Good night. The Sonic Society is written and produced by Jack J. Ward and David Ott, with original music provided by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society through Creative Commons licensing. The Sonic Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. We're here on a deserted stretch of beach on the Gulf Coast. Washed up on this and so many other beaches every year are tons and tons of seaweed. For centuries, nobody knew what to do with it all. But then, smart scientists like me... And me decided to make this renewable resource into a high-octane motor fuel. And that's how Oshaline was born! When you pull in at the pump at your local Oshaline station, you'll always find three high-quality choices for your motoring needs. Regular Oshaline, the long-time favorite with everyday motorists. Oshaline with Kelpinate, the miracle additive to give you more miles per dollar and high-octane sargasso with both kelpinate and celadine. 
for a cleaner engine and better efficiency. Ask your Ocean dealer for advice on which of the three is better for your car. When you stop at Ocean, you go with conviction, proudly manufactured by the Full Patrol Corporation. <laughs>